Automobilista 2 has had a tumultuous history up until this point. There's a large contingent for which it's become their most favorite sim, and there's an even larger group who want to see it succeed. But there's been a fair share of criticism towards Ryza, specifically for their choosing of the Madness engine to power the physics behind AMS2. For myself, mostly enjoying vintage racing, AMS2 is an interesting title. It's one of the only modern sims coming out that has first-party vintage content. I've done a small handful of videos so far, taking a look at the vintage formula cars and racing at some of the different circuits, and most recently took a look at the 911 RSR they released, alongside some other sims which modeled the same car. Throughout those different experiences, I've had a lot of fun racing in AMS2. None of the videos have been me faking enjoyment for the sim in any way, and I'm absolutely not endorsed by Ryza at all. But despite the enjoyment, I'd be lying if I said it didn't take a lot of work to get things to that point. A lot of testing, different settings, getting the cars to feel correct. But once you get things dialed in, AMS2 does have a lot to offer. And I maintain that this is the sim I'd recommend for somebody that's never raced a PC racing sim, and maybe just bought a wheel and really wants to get into it. Compared to the other sims out there, and if you like vintage racing, this is by far the easiest one to get running, get working with your wheel, and just get out and get racing. I actually find myself doing random races in AMS2 fairly often. If I only have an hour or 45 minutes or something, booting up AMS2 and picking a random car and track combination and going racing uh, is a lot easier than it is in some of the other sims. And especially offline racing against AI, nine times out of 10, everything just works together and you end up having a pretty fun experience. So I wanted to share what I've been doing most lately, and this is the BMW 2002 Turbo. It was a car that came out in 1973 and was released for AMS2 just about a month ago at this point, at the beginning of October. This is, I believe, the fourth classic touring car that Ryza has released for AMS2. It sits alongside a Corvette Stingray in one of their classic touring packs, the other pack being made of a Lotus 23 and a Mini Cooper. This is actually a car that's interested me for a really long time. I remember seeing a picture of Mickey Lotto racing one of these around the Nürburgring, I believe, in around 1973, 1974, with the Jägermeister livery, bright orange car, and I always liked the look of it. For me, this epitomizes a touring car, a car which doesn't look so far from its street counterparts, but just invites you to throw it around a circuit. Touring cars typically have shorter races, but I found a lot of fun racing these cars in slightly longer events. I've been setting up what I'd call mini endurance races in Automobilista 2, just an hour long, maybe two hours if I have a little extra time, but an hour long races, racing these touring cars around different circuits, and with this get to experience the different weather conditions, the different day to night cycles, and how that all interacts. I think shows off some of the best parts of Automobilista 2. The environmental system overall is something rises clear Clearly spending a lot of time on and so when it all comes together in a race when you're racing at night and the rain is drying up and there's a dry line forming and you have to watch out for puddles or if you run a little wide you run into something and start aquaplaning it's where the sim delivers unlike any other can so lately I've been racing the BMW 2002 Turbo and jumping in there's two different cars for the class that it's in this is the tier one uh, vintage touring cars. So you have the 2002 Turbo, you have the Chevy Corvette C3. This is different than the Corvette that's in with the 911, a little less power, not as much of a, a sports car. It's more of a, a touring type car, uh, but paired quite well with the 2002. It's a little faster on the straight, slower through the corners, just what you'd expect. Uh, and then you do have the other class of vintage touring cars, and this is much more the 60s class way slower overall but they're a fun pairing you end up with a multi-class racing with the mini cooper and the lotus 23 much smaller cars much slower overall about the same in the corners actually but on the straightaways much slower uh, and gives you two different classes of racing you can also if you go to a big track you know pair them with the gt classics which is your 911 and the corvette c3 which is much more of your Le Mans type corvette uh, and those pair quite well you'd then with this vintage touring class be much more in the middle but those different cars fun to play around with at least for me the classic type of racing with the h pattern big steering wheel, uh, slide the cars around the corners, and they all pair together very well. So within the race settings, I'll show you what I've been doing lately. I've been running about an hour long races, maybe a little longer if I can, but I find that this amount of time gives you enough time where you don't have to take crazy advantages or try to cut cars off and make dive bombs into the corners. You can just run a natural race, race hard, but race clean, uh, and everything comes together. And at the end of an hour, especially because you don't have to set 
everything else up actually goes by really quick in my experience. Um, Automobilista 2 features a lot of options with the date and the weather and how everything works. You can actually set this up to run a specific day and then use the real weather from that day, kind of like you would in a flight simulator even, but uh, I've been just setting it to a day. It's gonna control where the sun is in the sky and also control just the, the scenery on a lot of the tracks, the foliage and everything that you see, which is cool. Start time, if you're gonna do what I'm gonna do here, uh, is an important one. How quickly do you want the day to turn to night or anything like that? Start a race at noon. <laughs> I think that's a favorite of many. Uh, and then for time progression. So if you're running an hour race, the ideal scenario for this would be to set 24 times time progression. And that would mean in within one hour, you would actually do a full day to night and back to day cycle. 25 times, uh, unfortunately, they don't have a 24 time setting. So 25 times is as close as we could get. It's a little bit faster than it should be for an hour long race, but it's just about the same. So when you start a race at noon, uh, you'll start in the daytime. And as the hour goes by, you know, it'll actually transition to night and back to day. And you'll do a full day or a little bit more than a day in that one hour, which is so much fun. I think the transition tonight and back to day, especially with weather changes, is a lot of what endurance racing and just racing over long distance is all about. And you can have some of that here within even just an hour time. Now setting up the weather, there's a bunch of different options with this and a few new ones that Rise has added recently, but you can set up different weather slots and each of these uh, basically means a different weather condition that's gonna happen throughout the race. Uh, you can have a whole bunch of these if you wanted to, um, up to four, I believe, overall. That means the weather's gonna transition four times over this race. Uh, for weather forecast is where you could pick actually exactly what happens. And if I click into any of these, um, these are all the different weather conditions that uh, Automobilista 2 has by default and they recently added i believe recently added because i don't remember it being here before but a random condition option so if you want a race which the weather changes a bunch of times randomly uh, you can just set up four weather slots that all have the random option and every race you do is going to have completely different weather uh, i think this is really cool uh, four might actually be kind of extreme especially if you're only doing an hour long race every you know 15 minutes or so you're going to get a new kind of condition but it does transition there are different uh, transitioning options here that we can pick to uh, pick how the weather actually switches throughout the race. Um, but sync to race, as I have it set, will sync it up to that 25 times progression. So these four weather conditions will switch throughout the race. You get wildly different races every time you race from rain to dry to wet, or maybe just wet the whole time, different levels of rain and things. Keeps it really dynamic, keeps it fresh. Also, it's just kind of one setting. You can just set it to random and then just do race after race and you'll have a different experience each time. In my opponent settings, I'll show you what I've got set up. One thing I would love for Ryza to add is the ability to have a larger grid. I uh, believe, and I could be wrong with this, but from what I've seen in my testing, the most cars that you can have at any of the tracks is 29. Uh, right now so it's you plus 29 so it's 30 cars overall some you can have less than that or you can't have uh even 30 because there's less grid positions or something like that but for the largest tracks 30 cars is the limit and it's a little bit low for some of the for some of the circuits especially the big tracks like the nurburgring and things i, I miss the days of gtr2 and you could have grids of 60 and plus that people have made files and things to in our factor to have grids of 120 cars and i think these days, uh, you know, things have progressed a lot. I don't know what the madness engine is like, but it'd be awesome to do a race at Spa with a hundred cars. I think that would just be a ton of fun as an offline experience. So wish you could increase this, but 29 is the max that I've seen that you can do. Uh, you can set their skill level. Aggression wise, I've been running it super low. And um, this, this is just to avoid any scenarios where the AI are doing dive bombs and things like that. I found it to actually work pretty well. They still race you in your own class fairly well. Uh, but, uh, you know, they've implemented something with the multi-class where the actual slower cars will get out of the way with blue flags and all of that. So it's it works quite well. And I haven't found a reason to raise the aggression much. If you raise it much more, they start, you know, running into the back of you and stuff. So five is what I've been running, at least with these cars. And then for your vehicle classes, this is where you can set up pretty much anything that you'd want to race. You can pick any of the cars uh, to race against each other. And hopefully at some stage, they allow you to pick specific cars or specific liveries, or maybe even build your own rosters with different drivers and things. You can't do the historical aspect of it. If you download some of the skin packs or things that exist out there right now, you're still going to be running against 
whatever the game chooses you're going to run against. But at some stage, I've heard they want to allow you to be able to define your own roster exactly. Pick the exact cars and paint schemes and names and maybe aggression levels, strength levels for each driver, which I think would be great. But for now, keeping it simple, you can just add in the car classes. And so I've added both vintage touring car classes, which allows you to race all four of those cars at the same time in two classes in one race. Lastly, kind of hidden setting, if you jump back out, it took me a while to find this actually in options and under gameplay was where you can set how fast tires and fuel wear. And for an hour long race, for these cars anyway, setting it four times means you'll pit roughly twice in any of the races. You might actually want to pit more than that if you can for tires specifically, but this is one of the essential things I would say for running this type of race. So you want to have some pit stops, you want to be able to try to do some sort of strategy or just have that be an extra thing. You're not just going to be lapping for an hour. You're going to be coming into the pits, taking fuel and tires a couple times and keeping things fresh uh, overall. And with these settings in cars, I found them fun to take to almost any circuit in Automobilista 2. They've been adding a lot of historical tracks, most recently with Monza, uh, but the catalog of tracks that's in Automobilista 2 is quite impressive. There's a lot of circuits as well in South America that I know for myself haven't really heard of or raced on before. So this type of setting where you can have the same cars and the same settings uh, and then just pick a random track just makes it really quick to jump into a race and have something fun and challenging. So to show all this off, I thought I'd pick a track that I'm sure not a lot of folks have heard of and is one of the most beautiful tracks in Automobilista 2, if not kind of in racing in general. This is the Autodromo Yawacocha, if I'm saying that correctly. It's in Ecuador. It's actually the closest track to the equator from what some of the descriptions I've read. It's a great track in Ecuador, uh, really fun, challenging technical track. It's, it's shorter, which I think is great. Having a limited grid, 30 cars means you'll be lapping cars quite quickly around it, uh, but it still has some fast sections and flowing in general. It doesn't have a lot of uh, tight hairpins or anything like that, just one at the end of the lap. So it's a cool track beautiful scenery in the mountains. It's actually right next to a lake. The original circuit layout, I believe, went around the whole lake, but was abandoned in the 1960s with some safety concerns. This track built uh, right at the beginning of the 70s to host racing and hosts, I believe, just touring car, sports car racing in South America today. So we'll do an hour long accelerated endurance race here at Ibarra. Uh, one hour from day to night to day again on accelerated time with accelerated fuel and tire wear. We'll have to stop probably twice, starting from the back of the grid, get the multi-class, it's uh, spread out even. So we'll have some slow cars we got to get by right at the beginning, but then try to settle in and see, see if I can come to the front through this. But should just be fun racing with dynamic weather conditions that'll change several times throughout the race. Should keep things interesting throughout it. Hopefully we'll have some competitive racing, something fun to watch. But this, in my opinion, is a fun way to enjoy Automobilista 2 and offers a lot that I don't think other sims can do quite as easily these days. All right, coming into the final corner, we'll get control of the car here and start the race. It'll be a slow start. We're at the very back of the grid. I actually got too many Coopers behind me that I passed that were on the outside, but have every car to pass, a lot of slower ones in front. Cooper and Lotus just can't keep up on the straightaway, so we'll blast past some of them down this long front straightaway, come down to the first corner. We're all gonna check up here, just to ease it on in for the first lap. Through the slow stuff, they're not so much slower, but through this fast stuff especially, we can easily take them on in our turbo. Over 200 horsepower in this little car. is very late on it come down to second gear and we'll head into a couple sections of tighter corners here and you can see the mountains in the background this is such a beautiful track looks like we've got pretty heavy clouds right now we'll see how that progresses throughout the race but especially if it's sunny out which hopefully it'll be at some point in the race it's a beautiful beautiful venue we've got the mountains and then straight ahead there is a lake the circuit used to circle the whole lake but we're just alongside of it for part of it out of the first section and coming to the second one here. Past one of the BMWs behind me. The second accelerate out of this, get onto a little straightaway. 
this will come down to a chicane towards the end of the lap that's nearly flat out. Ooh, cars backing back and forth. This corner is nearly flat out when you're on a lap by yourself. We've got a BMW right behind me now. Try to accelerate through the final corner onto the front straightaway to complete the first lap. still squeeze you in the low aggression setting that I have, but they won't run into the back of you or anything like that, which I've found, at least with these cars, to work out. I'm gonna get bogged down behind the Mini Cooper here, maybe fly to the inside, down a second gear. Right to the door, I'm gonna touch slightly there. And hopefully the video can pick it up, but offline, let's come to the inside of this Lotus, definitely contact there. Run them a little wide into the dirt. It's kind of a dirty move. Get away with it, though. Yeah, but I don't know if you'll see it on the video. There's marbles on the track at different corners. They'll actually pick up throughout the race, part of the dynamic surface. Let's run here in this Cooper. By the Mini. Accelerated out, have a lot more power than him. But you do have to watch out for the marbles and the dust on the track. The track surface itself is not like it is in other sims. And I know R Factor 2 has got a good dynamic track model. I know iRacing is getting there with it. But AMS2 definitely has it. Where, especially if it rains, we'll see if it rains, but if it rains, you've got to pick the right lines on the track. The whole track is feels different, so it's really important to make sure you drive on the right parts of it, even in the dry, but more so in extreme weather. I come out of the first corner this time, flat out through the first one, scream past this Lotus. Such a small car. BMW 2002 is a pretty big car compared to the Lotus, but overall is a small car. Which just kind of puts in perspective how small small can be. Get it down to third a little early. On the apex there, gonna wait for it quite a long time. Car coming alive now. You can see in the bottom right, I've got my tire gauge, so. Left sides from going through those first couple of corners are actually warming up a little bit. Just walk down in third gear. Tire temperature is definitely very important around here, as will tire wear be too, with the wear on four times. You actually do wear out the tires. I don't know how they'll be around this track. Some of the other races I've done, you can really feel the difference when you put on a new set of tires, especially for the first three, four laps. Right, we're coming to the chicanes here. Pretty much flat out, you start braking halfway through and for the final corner. Get on the gas, second gear there. Pulling up on the couple in front. So I'm 11th overall and 11th in class. So all the cars in front of me are in my class. Get it up to fifth just as we come into turn one, flat out in the slipstream. Down to fourth for the second corner, run a bit wide. Nose it up the inside into turn three, but not going to be able to do it. So the BMW in front of me is going to try the inside of the Corvette. The second. All right, get a nice run on both of them. Come up here to the tighter corners. All right, get on the inside, pass both. One pass. It's just me, but it does seem like it's actually getting a little darker out. It's too early for it to be night. Oh, and I see a couple drops of rain actually. I was just thinking it might turn to rain. See how bad the storm is, but 
just see a couple. I don't know if they'll pick up on the recording super well, but I can see a little bit on the glass. One, one criticism, I guess, very minor, the rain effects themselves. I had only really raised the formula cars in the wet prior to these, but the front windshield effect, very much like the helmet screen that you get in the formula cars. And so you just get kind of dots of rain on it. Except when it's raining super heavily, you don't really even need the wipers. Uh, it's not quite how rain reacts on a real windshield, but uh, the rain effects overall are quite impressive, especially on the track. It looks like the track is dry, but it's starting to pick up rain a little bit, so we'll see how hard this rainstorm is. But rain in Automobilista 2 is one of the best parts about the sim. Definitely does wet weather really well. Maybe the best I've seen in, in any sim. I'm kind of tentative on the track now because I'm worried it's going to suddenly be wet. Second gear. Might just be a light rain, which might not even get the track wet, depending on how long it lasts. A second there again, but pulling up on these three in front in the wet. Should have to pit about every 20 minutes or so as I take a weird line there on the curb. And 20 minutes is when you'd want to pit just to keep things nice and even. But if I can go longer, if it feels like I'm still making progress, if the other cars around me aren't pitting, then I can try to stretch it a little bit. Uh, that rain's picking up now. I'll put on the wipers. They do clear up the windscreen. You don't quite need them, though. A bit deep into the final corner here. Try to cut it up on exit. Track's starting to get a little slick. I can feel it. One thing that does happen when the track gets wet, too, is your tires go bone cold. And definitely changes them as well. You almost wonder how much of it's the track being wet versus your tires just being super cold. Oh, the rain's gonna pick up now. You can see some fog coming in or just some little downpours. The track's gonna get wet. It's still not wet. You can't quite see it yet. It'll get reflective when it gets really wet. But, oh, the car's starting to slide there a little. Second gear here. Turn my lights on, the two in front. Turned them on. The Corvette wouldn't be my first pick for a car to fit in the class of the 2002, but I suspect they might have had easy access to one doing one for the 911 pairing. It's not a bad car, but it'd be neat to see some more touring cars from this early 70s time to kind of pad out a nice roster, maybe an Opal, something else to run around the Nürburgring. All right, closing up on these three, the car is getting really skittish track of seeing it here and there just be a little wet looking. Back out of it here, coming into the chicane. Really want to go too wide through there if you don't have to. The second gear coming to the final corner. I think you can see the tracks a little reflective. So the tarmac getting wet. We actually have a bunch of cars in the pits. Still way too early for us to pit. Nice run on the Corvette in front, down the straightaway even. Try to come up the inside. Run a little bit wide there, but just able to edge them out. Fourth gear through the second corner, all right now behind two of the BMWs. Get down to third gear. Oh, the Corvette's gonna come back up the inside, run a little bit wide, not as much grip as I need. Still kind of suns out here and there with clouds and rain. It's a really cool weather effect. Raining quite hard now. There's no different tires in these cars. You just run one tire, kind of all weather, at least from what I've seen. So we don't have to pit for tires or anything like that. We just kind of have to deal with it. You can actually see my tires are cooling down a bit. 
already. One of the cars in front's here to pick up water too, so it's proper wet now. Let's see if I can get past these two, holding me up quite a bit for sixth. Get this run out of the corner there. Go too wide through here, but yeah, it's just not gonna work out. One of the BMWs runs wide, run towards the inside, get around him. Go behind the red one. The cars exiting the pit lane. We got the Mini Coopers there, so they've already made a pit stop pretty early. Well, this might get awkward here. Coming up to the first corner, we got a Mini right in front. Very, very wet now and we get the sun setting my god this game sometimes can be so beautiful it's all random too just the weather conditions just pick up a random track in some random weather and see what happens with the sun setting too I don't know you just can't make make settings like this or if you configure a race and you know exactly what the settings are going to be it's not quite as interesting so you know what's coming oh it's proper wet though we still have somewhat of a dry line on the track let's get around i think i'm a lot quicker than this red car i just need to find a way around them but you can see there's this line that's at least the water's not sitting on it and then off of that we've got puddles and everything out of the chicane, back out of it, let him by. I don't know if the rain's stopping. Seems like it's far too sunny to be wet. Looking this way, it is very cloudy, so let's have one of those clouds right over us, but not in the distance. So in seventh right now, still looking good on tires and fuel and everything. Coming to the first corner, just throw the car sideways, miss the apex. Can't see in the spray of the car in front at all. Hopefully it comes out right on the video. Right, maybe you can throw it up the inside of him here. Second gear. And finally get around him there. Kind of get the throttle down. It's starting to get dark now, too. The sun's falling behind the mountain. It gets dark quite quick at this track, even in real life, just because the mountains are in the way. So as soon as the sun dips behind them, even though it's still quite early, just can't see anymore. And man, it's super slick out. Steering wheels now, only a suggestion of where to go. Just kind of slide our way around the track. It's raining pretty heavy. Must be one of the heavy rain settings now. We got a whole group of cars way up the track, but no, no cars immediately in front of me. So try to take advantage of this and pull out a bit of a gap on the cars behind. The final turn. You now, although this track is represented in its modern day form. I know these tracks, a lot of the tracks in South America haven't necessarily changed much since you know, the 80s or 90s. I think I read about this track specifically hasn't really seen updates since the 1990s. It was starting to get very dark then. So it really fits a lot of different cars. It's a natural track with grass and dirt on the sides. You can race pretty much anything here and have it feel appropriate. All right, so pretty much turned to night there, down to third gear. So we'll start coming up on a lot of the lapped cars, the Lotuses and Minis, and you'll see they actually get out of the way. It's maybe a little bit more than they should actually do. 
but there is absolutely something coded into AMS2. There's so much spray in front. Oh, the car gets sideways there. No! Wow, some puddle or something caught me there. All right, time to wake up. Still have maybe a couple laps till I should pit, but totally lost the rear end. The track is very, very wet. Didn't lose too much time. Got it looped around pretty quick, but lost two positions because these two in front. Worked by them all over again. Just trying to get out of the spray a little bit because it's so hard to see when you're right behind them. These two are trying to get past this Lotus. We're coming to the chicane. Man, just can't see anything. Let's see if I can just get past this BMW before the first turn. Oh, bad mistake there, but I think we'll cover pretty well. Get past one of them through the first corner. Quite a daring move in the wet. So I'm gonna get the second one here. Car understeers on the entry and the exit. All right, so we're covered back up to fifth now, so maybe some cars pitting. Let's see if I can go maybe one more lap before that. Tires are fine, they're just super cold. Still have plenty of fuel. But we got away with from that spin without any damage. I'm up on the back of the Corvette here. He might be for position. Seems awful slow though, but like I was saying before the spin, Lapped cars will actually get out of the way, which is something sorely missing from so many sims and their AI. I want to say the last sim which properly did something like that was actually Grand Prix Legends, <laughs> which sounds like a coincidence because it's one of the sims I love most, but I really do think that was one of the last sims that had blue flag AI that would dive out of the way. I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments, but uh, there's not a lot of sims that do it. And for multi-class racing, it's absolutely essential I'm through the chicane here. I might actually dive into the pits this lap. We don't need to go yet, but tires are getting a little bit worn. It'll be helpful to have a little more grip. So we'll come down 60 miles an hour, get into the pits, stop in our box, and get served by the crew. All right, we'll pull out of the pits here. Try not to speed. Not too bad of a pit stop, no damage to repair or anything. Haven't found that there's any options, so hit the exit line there. Haven't found that there's any options to actually change what the crew's gonna do to the car. It seems like there's some sort of crew chief for strategy baked in. Maybe it's something you can change in some of the setup menus, but I haven't looked at it too much yet. But man, it's dark now. This is one of the toughest times to race, and hopefully it comes through in the video, because I know dark footage can be difficult. Oh, we're gonna run a bit wide. That's exactly why. Oh, just get away with that. There's a couple big mistakes so far in this one. I've got my headlights, but they only illuminate just a very little amount, especially with the rain right now, which is continuing on into the night here. It just makes it ultra difficult. Miss that apex a little bit. Be lucky to keep it on the track here throughout the night. Oh, I hit a puddle there. You can hear it when you hit some standing water and it yanks the wheel out of your hands. It's a sensation that I haven't fe felt in any other sim, but it feels very realistic. And you can see him on the track. I hit another one there. You can actually visually see the puddles and try to avoid them, and as cars run, where the cars actually run, if it stops raining at some point, that'll actually dry up, you know, first, but you could still have puddles off the track. I 
know there's a few sims that have done wet weather, but I would say this is this does it just as good, if not better, than anything I've ever seen. And we'll hope, hope that I get some drying weather at some point, just so we can see what that looks like across the line. I've seen a few of those, you might have seen a black shadow there. A few of the tracks, there's this random black shadow, usually near the start-finish line, some sort of graphical issue. On one car in front, down a fourth here, definitely way off the pace. And it's not that the car can't go a little quicker, but just with the nighttime and the rain, to be so tentative on everything, I've almost thrown it off the track, or I have thrown it off the track a couple times, but a lot more than that. Little Lotus in front, can't even see where the track is in front of him. There we go. Spin out there again, like I did the first time. So what, I'm in eighth position right now. So we're over a third of the race, 37 minutes to go. Right out to the edge of the track. Oh, car sliding on the dirt. I think I just clipped the grass there. It's a terrible middle part of the lap. conditions so I bet the Lotus is actually a little easier to drive in this type of weather are snaking all over the track get up to fourth gear Ten a second for the final corner this is a type of conditions that I really cannot I can't actually imagine driving a car at racing pace and conditions like this. Definitely where you make your money. Come down to the first corner. There we go. Just a lift of the throttle to make sure we'll get through all right. And then the second corner, down a fourth. A little more torque in the engine, help it turn. Hit the curve a bit too early on the inside, but not too bad of a line there. 1.4 seconds down off my quickest lap, just through the first corner. there. I'll probably say that a hundred times in this video. Run a, run a little wide. Just kind of sliding the car around. It almost feels like it's on ice. It feels really good though. This car has really changed my opinion of AMS2. I'm not saying that hyperbolically at all. Like if you haven't, if you've tried Automobilista 2 before and maybe found it the same way I did. It's fine sometimes. I love how it looks, but you know, I wish I wish the cars felt more connected or some of the things the cars are doing feel wrong here and there. I definitely felt that way with some of the formula cars. This car, even more so than the 911, the 911 to me didn't feel this good. This feels like I think it should. It's still challenging and there's still some stuff about it that's different than other sims I've played, but I don't feel like anything about it's wrong. It feels it feels like it should do. And uh, it's definitely increased my enjoyment of this sim so much driving this car. Now in these conditions, this is more of a chore than it is fun, but we'll see if I can get through it at least. I wasn't expecting some torrential rains for this race. Especially through the night. The night feels so long sometimes. I think you can, of course, use the date that we set 
in the options to control you know, what time of year it is. So depending where you are on Earth, that would change the length of the day. Now with this track, we're on the equator, so I don't think that'll have the same effect. Almost to halfway. Since we started the race at noon, I would expect it to start getting daytime again. Maybe another 10 minutes or so. with these cars around most of the tracks as well in the sim. Uh, the shorter tracks or the tighter, twistier circuits uh, are, are more fun. The tighter, the twistier, the more fun it seems, at least for me, uh, just because of the limited car count and the fact that these cars are, are fine around tiny, tiny circuits. Uh, so I really enjoyed there's the classic Hockenheim and they have a version of the short course, which is kind of what the modern circuit is, but uh, the 88 version of Hockenheim that comes with this sim has a short course version that was a lot of fun with these cars. Uh, I've tried them at Spa and the Monza and things that were released and they're fine. They, you know, obviously work well. Uh, those tracks themselves, they're, they're just built for faster cars, I think, so they're not quite as much fun. Spa's a little bit better than Monza, but uh, the Imola Classic Circuit's a lot of fun. Uh, Cadwell Park's good. I don't think the Silverstone is, is too much the right track. That one as well is quite simplistic and just kind of a fast track, but you can do whatever you want. Now the Nordschleife is a great track for these cars, and of course they just have the modern Nordschleife. Let's get extra sideways there. There's rumor that a classic Nordschleife is coming, which I'm very excited for if it's actually going to come. Uh, but you know, at that point, really wish they could increase the car counts because 30 cars are on the Nordschleife. You might as well not be racing anybody in most laps. Out of the final corner, more cars in the pit lane. Looks like the lower class has to pit quite often. We're in seventh, though, and BMW exiting as well up to sixth. Oh, up to fifth. All right, top five. Get up to fifth place here. Fifth gear through the first corner. Tires are getting pretty worn. Down to fourth. Whoa, oversteer, understeer. Up on this white Mini Cooper. The real gems, I would say, is what come around the outside of them. Nice and easy. See, he actually let me buy. Just so cool. Maybe a bit extreme, like I was saying earlier, that, you know. Especially if they're battling other cars in their class, you would expect a slower class car to just move out of the way, but it's nice that they do it in the sim, because so many sims have the issue with lapped AI, and you see it all the time in GTR2 and some of the races I'm doing where just the AI just don't get out of your way, in real life you'd wave people by and things all the time, so kind of have it be the way it is here. Oh, it looks like the rain might have stopped finally. Yeah, I can tell that maybe it stopped for the last lap and I didn't notice, but there is a bit of a dry line here. It's not a dry line, but there's no standing water on it. You see the lighter line on the asphalt. Still very wet. Especially, you're going to have to watch out for puddles off the line, but the rain has stopped, luckily. We'll see if it starts again. Just over halfway into the race. 18 gallons of fuel left. I want to make it another eight minutes if I can. In fifth place. Despite the one spin, I think things are going all right, but I don't know if we'll be able to catch the first couple cars. The first corners, like the windshield again. Do you have to watch on the drying tracks the Cars, if they go offline, they'll pick up a ton of water. Oh, slide so sideways there. I, I got it. This feels good. I'm using my big wheel rim with this on my CSL. And it 
just feels right with this car. A second. All right, Mini Cooper in front offline. So he picks up so much water. Headlights in the rear view. If those are faster cars or not. Looks like it might be a BMW in my rear view going to the outside of the Mini Cooper. I expect if you just came out of the pits, you definitely have better tires than I do. This Mini's gonna stick on the inside. It's also great, they don't just switch lanes on you. It seems like they pick a lane inside or outside and then they stay there, even if you know it's not the optimal lane for the corner. I know in Grand Prix Legends they do get out of your way, but then they'll switch lanes to be on the off lane through a corner. Down a second. This is a BMW behind me and he seems quicker. Oh, I'll run into some puddles there in the exit of the corner. The car gets really skittish. too early there but luckily able to save the car from running wide it's not a lot of space in the runoff there he run right up to a berm it's on the left side of the track second gear I mentioned GTR2. I think, you know, for me, this type of racing where you can just kind of pick a track and do a little, you know, this isn't an endurance race. It's one hour, maybe longer than a lot of the races folks do these days. But to me, it's kind of your bare minimum for a good length race, especially for sports cars. And um, I definitely get GTR2 vibes from just what this lets you do. There's a few features missing. Really, driver swaps is a big one. That kind of prevents you from doing really long races in this. Uh, maybe more detailed strategy options and things like that, but biggest thing for me is just the selection of content. It does feel like AMS2 is, is kind of all over the place. They have a lot of the historic content, which I love, and they're also doing a lot of modern GT type content. Get a whole string of cars here. A couple Mini Coopers. I'll maybe get by one or Lotus in front of him. Just him through the first corner. Get by the Lotus here. Dry line's actually quite wide there. You can see in the middle of the corner though, it's not quite as wide. Third gear. So they've got the vintage content. But they also are pushing, it seems like, the GT3 type stuff, the modern GT cars, which you know, aren't my thing, but obviously are a lot of people's things. The BMW behind me is right on my bumper now. Make some good time through this middle section. Let's keep me honest, at least. But, you know, the GT3 stuff is fine, I guess. It, you know, I'm, I'm just curious to what they're doing, because they're also, you know, as we sit here today, uh, just about to release a 90s, late 90s, IndyCar, Champ Car, which I'm very excited for as well. It just feels, though, that the content's all over the place. We don't exactly have the right tracks to race a 90s Champ Car on. There'll be some fun ones. I'm, I'm probably going to do a video if that car is any good at Jakarta Pagua. The uh, Rio Oval quote oval layout. Oh, the car gets sideways there. I'm gonna hit the curb just slightly on the brakes. I think this BMW is gonna go up my inside. I'll get a better run than him coming out though. 8.3 gallons of fuel left. The blow by the BMW, but really tight. That was sketchy through the final corners.
So it'll be great to have a 90s champ car in this sim, but, you know, it's also just another thing. I kind of, you know, for myself, I wish they would pick something specific. I'm sure that's not what will make them money, unfortunately. But if they were to say, hey, we're going to be the 60s and 70s, you know, sports car sim, and they just made tons of cars like this and like the 911 they put out, and they'll do all their historic tracks. That would be kind of my dream <laughs> for this sim. And I think that, you know, carving out a niche and saying this is what we're doing, you know, might set them apart a little bit, or just allow them to focus more and do a really good job at that. I feel like them trying to go after the GT3 market, I'm sure they have research on it, but it feels like that market is already very well captured. BMW in front. I don't know if this is for position or not. I'm in fourth suddenly. I'm trying to keep it tight there, but the track's really slippery, and I've got the other BMW right next to me, right behind me, actually. All right, fourth gear. Looks like it's really cleared up skywise, actually. I'm just gonna come up the inside again. It's pretty aggressive enough for the percentage we're on. All right, cars, more cars diving in. Do this one more lap here before I dive in for my final stop. Well, we're in first, so we're gonna lead a lap. Looks like everybody's pitting, though. Out of the first corner. Oh, I missed the turn in. Luckily, no big rain puddles or anything on the outside. Catch me out. Right behind is so quick, but I'm just holding him up. He's being very polite about it. third gear. Going to long turn three. Got nudged there. He <laughs> finally went for it. I think my tires are shot. Back on the throttle. Accelerate away a little bit. Just a small breathing room. It's mini on the inside. Just taking all the curve to get out of my way. is just starting to brighten up slightly, very slightly. Lotus Lotus crowds me to the inside just a little bit. Let me hit the puddle there. Third gear. We'll come to the pits this time, about 20 minutes left, so we'll pit just with a third of the race to go. Oh, there's my pit sign, pit in. the rare pit board. I want to run a bit wide. Right. The BMW is finally going to get around me right as I pull into the pits. It's too bad for him. Down to 60. We'll take our pit stop. Alright, so we'll roll out of the pits then. For the final run now to the, to the line. So 19 minutes to go. In P7, I think I just lost sixth to the car in front, so we should be able to catch him pretty quickly. Rain has stopped, but we could have that start again. We don't know. The track is still very wet offline, but you can see, at least I can in my headlights, a nice dry line or drier line in the middle. It's not consistent though. It's something I've seen, you know, some other sims you get a dry line and it's kind of like you have this paved strip of asphalt in the middle of the whole circuit, but. For this, there's still sometimes little puddles in the way, or it's narrower in spots than others. It really depends on where you drive. I think it's actually understanding where all the cars are driving and making that drier. The sky's turning blue now, because the sun's gonna come up here soon. Thankfully, it's so hard to drive at night. Night driving, it's really cool when a sim does it well, and I would classify this as doing it very well. It's a very different feeling, and I love this time of an endurance race when the sun's coming up. To me, this is the whole reason why it's a lot of fun to do these time progression races. Spray coming up in front. You can see the sky getting pink and everything. Just get by that Mini Cooper.
cleaning up nicely now, though. Past a little bit of that traffic. As it gets brighter, we'll get a better sense, too, of what the track looks like. One thing I really like about the weather changing conditions, too, if it stays dry, which it's, it's going to be very sunny here in a second, the track doesn't just instantly dry up, especially in areas that you don't race. I see some sims that have the track drying, that it just instantly gets dry once there's sun for five minutes, especially if you have it on accelerated anything. A lot of fog here, too. This is great. It's like a dewy morning. Got some water there on the inside. The track takes its time, though, to dry, and in a few races I've done it. I had a couple races. I did a race at Donington Park where it rained right at the start of it. It was raining when we took the green flag and then it stopped raining and actually got sunny and the track was wet the whole time on the edges and there'd be puddles here and there so you had to kind of adjust where you would drive or there are a couple places where you wouldn't really want to take an overtake. Like we have here, we've got like a river coming across the track through the final corner. All right, I think we're closing up on a couple cars, a little bit of spray in the windshield there. The six, that Corvette that just came out of the pits was for position. Let's see, there might be a couple cars taking pit stops late. I've seen the AI pit stop seem to be, you know, fine with strategy wise. They're not doing anything too silly, which is good. It's nothing worse than getting to the end of the race and the AI takes a pit stop on the very last lap. Oh, but the sun's coming out now. It's tough to see actually with the fog. be pretty realistic. The track itself is probably pretty hot from cars running over it. So with the rain and everything, you would get some fog lifting off of it. I'm closing up on this BMW in front. This would be for top five, I think. Which would be good. I'd like to set the AI to be pretty tough. I don't personally don't really want to win easily any race that I do just for fun. I guess it's different if you have them, you know, set really difficult and then you practice a lot and really get good and then win. But I definitely want them to be, oh, and out into the sun. There we go. Just run a bit wide coming into the final corner. Got onto some water there through the chicane. It's a big puddle still. The sun has peaked over the mountain. It gets bright here very quickly, just as it got dark. We've got 14 minutes to go though. P6. A little Lotus here in front. He's going to be able to take the line into turn one. Cut off the throttle a little bit more than I had to there. Coopers, but I saw another BMW up there as well. So water on the windshield in front. Just dance around the mini. There we go. Ah, bright and sunny. This is perfect. are unreal. This game just looks so amazing that, especially when it all works like this and you find a good car to drive around, a good circuit, it's tough to be matched. Run right to the grass there, but able to stick in it. Lee Cooper on the inside. Might have a little bit of a run here. Definitely get by the Mini. We've got another one in front. to 
actually grip up as well as I thought I would to get to the inside. And so BMW is able to get around in that time. Flying to turn three though, a little too fast. Got to run pretty wide. Just balance the car. It's so drivable. It feels so good. We'll have a little bit of a chance here. Just take what we can get. We've got 11 minutes to go. Now's the time to push it a little bit harder. Got the better line here through this tight corner. There we go. Get fifth. I can see fourth right in front of me. I don't know. Is a podium even possible? I have to see how far third is ahead. Just pull right away from fifth place or sixth place. the hunt now. Big puddle there to the right. Definitely wouldn't want to hit that. Just breaking a little bit early for the final corner, but very easy to go off there. That's one of the harder corners on the track. We've got just 10 minutes to go then. It really feels like you've done something. It's kind of cheating a little bit having it be accelerated so much, but I still get the same satisfaction. You know, I used to do six hour races a lot in GTR2. You know, something like that, you can just set it to four times, and you, know, you could do that with this too, and it would be probably almost as much fun. The thing that's fun about GTR2 is having the driver swaps and all that. But the AI in this are good enough, maybe even better in some ways. If you like the car selection, I think. That's maybe one of the biggest parts of it. And this is these two touring class sets, although they're not meant for endurance racing, like I said at the very start there. You know, I feel like they fit really well with this, and especially because this car itself is just so fun to drive. Just elevates the whole thing. If you haven't, like I said a little bit earlier, if you have not driven this BMW yet, I kind of sat on it a little while because it's, although it's a car that I like, and if I was to pick a 70s touring car, this probably would be the one. When they announced it, I didn't exactly boot up the sim that very moment to try it out, and uh, I wish I had because it's it's a good one, and hopefully they can get the rest of their cars to kind of feel like this. I know they delayed a patch or fixing a few things and, you know, rise a it's definitely uh, definitely won me over with how much they're willing to fix things because they continually iterate on this and they clearly want to make it work. A bunch of cars coming out of the pits here. A couple Lotus. Got a uh, Corvette right in front of me. I don't know if he would be a lap down or what. Seems like he is. He's letting me by. A little sweeper on the outside, just barely. On the outside of a Mini Cooper, it's a little sketchy. Got to turn one here. Turn three, rather. Sliding. on the inside and outside too. I think they're modeled after the, the layout of the circuit or the terrain to puddle up where water would actually do something like that. That huge lake pretty much on the inside. And that'll stay that way unless it's sunny for a very long time or if cars start running over it a lot, which is just so cool that it all works like that. All right, closed up really well here. Bunch of wet on the windshield. Plot of 
spot, maybe down into turn three. We'll see how close I can get through turns one and two. Oh, a nice run through turn one. Kind of sketchy to do it in turn two. Right, on the inside, it's gonna hang it out there. I'll just squeak in front of him, take it away. It's gonna dive back up the inside into turn three. We'll use the lapped car as a pick, all right. Cooper helped me out quite a bit there, but able to get in front of the BMW. So up to fourth with six and a half minutes. Should have tried to shift there, missed the apex. See a couple cars up there. I don't know if those are for position or lapped cars, though, to try to put in the best laps I can. So Mini Cooper and Lotus, at least. up there just taking the final corners that might be my podium if I can get up to him track is very dry in some spots and you come into the final corner like that and it's just still like it's downpouring it's so cool how varied it is past the mini cooper there catch this lotus at an awkward spot just trying to get around the outside just dip onto the dirt closing in on the Corvette, but just a little bit at a time. I don't even know if that's for position, but hopefully it is. You can catch him with four and a half minutes left. Just take all the wrong lines there. Luckily, BMW here is very forgiving. It's actually a really good car for, I would say, for somebody new, too. It slides really well, so you can kind of no matter how you get into a corner, you can kind of get yourself out of it. It teaches you a lot of throttle control and all that good stuff. All right, come across the line. Just under four minutes. It's gonna be maybe three more laps. Time runs out and then you have your final lap. Although I won't know exactly what lap will be the final one. Just hope, hope there's enough time. Last pass that Mini Cooper that came out of the pits. Track's pretty dry down here, except for the inside. All right, reeling them in now. But quite a lot, actually. So you wonder if he's actually for position or not. He's getting out of my way. Maybe not. No. All right. So it's still fourth. It's a misnomer. So it might be a firm fourth position. I don't see any cars ahead. You can enjoy this last couple of laps. This is a great track. And it's one I would never really have known about. You know, it didn't hold. It doesn't hold any major motorsports these days. I think some touring cars and South American series, but nothing nothing that I know of, you know, super international. And uh, beautiful scenery, though. And the course itself, such a lot of fun to drive. I actually really want to try some of the 70s F1 cars around here. It feels like a you know good circuit for anything like that. 
across the line, just about two minutes. I think, for me, if Ryza can do some more stuff like this, add in more features for endurance racing, uh, I think my number one would be bigger fields. We're gonna run a bit wide. That could be quite taxing on a game depending on how it does the AI calculations and obviously just the sheer number of cars to draw and all that. But I think taking off with a grid of 60 cars like this at Spa would be just so awesome. Really open up possibilities of, especially once you can define your own rosters and just huge skin sets. Ooh. Jump up the inside of the inside of the track had no grip. Just slid wide. Some of the marbles and just wet track. At the end of a race, the racetracks in this just feel very used. Let's see a few more cars up there and it one of them might be my podium, but it's going to be just too far ahead. We have 47 seconds. I think we'll just have one more lap, potentially. Maybe two. Come out of the final corner, though. And start what I think will be the last lap, but we'll see. I think it's going to be too far to catch the car for position up there. Lotus got a BMW in front of him. I don't know. Doubt that's for a position. I'm catching him awful quick. Throw it up the inside of the Lotus. Yeah, this can't be for a position. Very slow on the inside. No! Oh, he's gonna spin me out. Or spin myself out, really, but I tried to go to the outside. Just get going. Don't want to lose another position. Man, it's a lot of drama for the last lap. That's definitely my fault, but something like that'll wake you up <laughs> on the final lap of the race, which should be the final lap. I was gonna be able to go wide there, and it shot a bit too much. We'll come out a little straight away in the back stretch here. Our kicks out wide. Our chicane. Well, drama towards the beginning of the race and <laughs> drama right at the end. Let's see if this is actually the checkered flag. I think we might actually have one more lap around. We would have seen that the leader had finished. So, one more. Or no, that's it. So <laughs> that's the end of the race. All right. Oh, what a race. A lot of fun, though. Wish it didn't spin on the last lap, but sometimes that happens. In this configuration, AMS2 is one of the most consistent sims that I've played. You can really do this on any of the tracks that it comes with, and it's a great time. BMW 2002, like I said several times during the race, is, is the best feeling car that, I, that I've driven in the sim. Uh, I'm sure some of the modern cars maybe, maybe feel good, but out of all the historic cars, you know, Porsche included, Corvette, uh, and the Formula Classic cars and everything, this one is the best. The default setup is, is quite good uh, as it is, and it just feels natural. You know, the car, it, it does feel different. You know, it feels like there's something different going on with the physics than uh, in some other Sims, but it feels predictable. It feels like I think it should, uh, and it's a great fun to drive. It's totally changed my opinion of the Sim overall. If I can get the rest of the content uh, to feel or just react or be kind of to the level that this car is, 
Uh, I think we'll be in, in store for some really fun stuff. Ryza is going to continue to put out the historic content. I know for a fact that Historic Spa and Historic Nurburgring are both on the list. I know there's a 90s champ car coming out or a cart car coming out here pretty soon. Uh, and I'm excited to see what else what else they actually come out with. I hope they can find their groove and you know if they can put out some of the cars that feel like this, maybe some other folks will recognize as well and we'll get a pretty good sim going. This is a ton of fun, highly recommend it. This car around any track is a, kind of a dream to drive. With the weather conditions, with the day to night cycles and all that factored in, the randomness of it all, uh, gives you something that's kind of endlessly playable and at least for me, a great way to relax after a long day or a stressful week. So I hope you enjoyed it. I got a few other things in the work along the lines of historical reviews and such, but you can probably expect some more Automobilista 2 from me in the not too distant future. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all again next time.